The NFL is back, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving all new players a can't-miss offer for week one. Bet just $1 on any NFL game during the first week of the season and receive $200 in free bets instantly, no matter what. Take advantage of this limited-time offer now. You heard that right. DraftKings is giving all new players $200 in free bets instantly when you place a bet of $1 or more on any Week 1 game. Head to DraftKings Sportsbook app now to check out the great promotion and daily odd boost. Plus, you can make every game a big game with same-game parlays. Download the DraftKings Sports app now and use promo code THPN to receive $200 in free bets when you place a dollar bet on any week one game. That's promo code THPN to get your free $200 in free bets instantly for limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, and Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. You are now tuned in to the The Windy Windy City City Benders Benders Podcast. This is WCBP. All right, it's another edition of the WCB Podcast, part of the Hockey Podcast Network, presented by DraftKings. Uh, it's Jerem, it's Tanner. Tanner, what's up, bud? Not much, man. You know, doing okay over here. Yeah, it's for me, but it's all right. It's, it's been a minute since I've seen you. Yeah, yes, absolutely. It's not like we didn't hang out all weekend or anything. <laughs> yeah, finally, I got some, uh, some time with the boys at the lake house. It was a very nice... Felt like the longest weekend ever, considering that we get up there on Friday night and drink until about 12 and then are no later than 12. Anyway, we were up, we were up at <laughs> yeah, it was like, like six o'clock in the morning to go golf. And oh, that was uh, that was an experience. It was indeed. <laughs> but it was great times. Great seeing you in person, not through a computer screen. Um, Lots to. T- well, not lots to talk about, but there's stuff we want to get into right away. Um, some really tough news came out in hockey in the hockey world, and it's plenty of tough news, actually. Lots of tough news. It was a very rough three days. Felt like um, lots of lots of members of the hockey family lost. Um, some that. Questions more like that definitely doesn't deserve to be taken this early, this quick. Um, first, so let's, yeah, I guess let's just get into it real quick. Um, so there was the three junior players that got in a car accident um, and they, they were, um, they all lost their lives. They were part of the, it was the Delta Hockey Academy. Um, Caleb Reimer, Parker Magnuson, and I, oh God, you know how to pronounce these names. I didn't have it pulled up, so I don't, uh, I don't remember off the top Ronan, of my head. Ronan Sharma. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, young young kids. Uh, it's really unfortunate. Probably had a bright future. Obviously, if you're playing junior hockey in Canada, I mean, um, I believe Reimer was playing for the the was the Wheat Kings in the Oiler. Uh, I was getting the, the names wrong or the team names wrong in juniors. Yeah, I get them mixed up like all the time. And I'm just trying to go based off of like memory right now. <laughs> Pulling up right now. But yeah, it's not it's not a good situation. It was a, a one car accident at 2 30 in the morning, which I mean doesn't sound like a good situation where no, not at you, all. you don't know what's going on, but like it's Usually people tend to assume that like there was drinking involved and probably driving a little too fast. Oil Kings. Oil Kings. Yes. Yes. So uh-huh. it's, it is all other things too that like on Reddit, when I was looking at that, um, the post that people were bringing up the fact that like the car they were driving is like a 350 horsepower car. Jesus. Was, yeah. So <laughs> it's also, uh, it's, yeah. It's, it's not it's not the way 
anybody should be going out at all. It's oh. especially young. I mean, just because I have him up right here, Caleb Reimer was 16. Yeah, no, they're, I don't, I don't think they were older than, like, the oldest was like 17, right? Yeah, Parker Magnuson was 17, and they, uh, uh, the other two were 16. God, terrible. Absolute tragedy. And the, the same day or the next day, um, there was news that Rangers legend, you looked up how to say it. Roger Bear. Passed away at the age of 80. Uh, he was the Rangers' all-time leading scorer. He was first in goals and points, and he was second in assists. He played his entire 18-year career with the New York Rangers. He um, was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1982. He is listed as one of the better players to have never won a Stanley Cup. That's true. That's a little bit of a foreshadow for later in the episode. But, um, again, different situation, but still. Yeah, he, was, not, he was 80, so it was, yeah. I mean – I don't know how much it was expected. It was was it the cause like cancer or no? I didn't see. Was it just that he? Not entirely sure. I'm trying to remember from yeah, I, I tragedies like so what's so much here. is going on that I'm I'm getting all of them confused. His yeah. cause of death has not been given. Okay. From what I've seen. Yeah, there's just been like a lot of bad news over the summer. With it's been it's been rough. Yeah. It's yeah, with deaths recently and people getting cancer. And it's just what it had what, what's been a crazy summer has just been also devastating. Yeah. And then just another one that just kind of hits hits home a little bit because it's a player who made his NHL debut with the Chicago Blackhawks. And this one's really hard because he was very much still active. He was an active player, but he was still very much involved in hockey. He started up the podcast, the missing curfew with uh, O'Brien and Upshaw, Upshaw. Yeah. Um, which is killing it. I think it's right. I think it's considered number two right behind Chicklets. And us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, Jimmy Hayes, uh, at the age of 31, passed away. Um, cause is unknown. They don't expect any foul play. They just, all that's known is that the first responders and EMTs were at, pronounced them dead at his home. Um, he played seven seasons in the NHL, with Chicago, Florida, Boston, New Jersey. He was the national champion with Boston College. He uh, leaves behind his wife two sons one was two years old one was three months old um the two-year-old they were just celebrating his birthday on sunday yeah when news broke that he had passed there was still an instagram story of from the birthday party um yeah patrick kane called him the the greatest player that or greatest teammate he's ever had and that's kind of echoed amongst every nhl player who has paid tribute to to him he was considered like one of those guys that no matter the situation, uh, what, cause towards the end of his career, he really wasn't playing much. He kind of lost his stuff a little bit and no matter what, he was happy. He was there. He was bringing up the boys. He's being a big support system for the guys. You hear countless stories of guys saying that they're, they don't know if they would have made it in the league if it wasn't for, wasn't for Jimmy. Um, it's absolutely devastating. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough as well. Just knowing that, like, I mean, I'm the same age as him, and yeah, it's a little scary because I'm just like, what I I, I want to know what happened, just because, like, if it's just natural, I'm like, oh fuck, like this could happen to anybody. Like, he was an athlete. Like, that's that's what's I so hard. Know. I mean, like, it's so hard to like accept this because it's like, how does a 31 year old athlete just die? Yeah, not to mention he had like posted on his Instagram stories like the day before and you can still see him after you get the news and you're like it's kind of fucking creepy it's very eerie um I know people are going like all over the board with what speculation and all that none of it matters but if no matter what it ends up being it doesn't take away anything from 
the man he was, the guy he was. It's heartbreaking for the kids that they're they're gonna grow up not knowing their dad. Yeah. I mean, how I I, so young. It's crazy. And it's like the two year old, like, is old enough to like understand who he was. And it's like I just my heart breaks just even imagining trying to like what's going what's going on right now with them trying to like, you know, the kids probably ask him for his dad and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. I mean, it's it's tough because, like, he's probably not going to have any memories of it, even though he's two. Right. Which is, like, really, really rough, I think. Just I'm trying to imagine, like, how that could be, but it's, I don't know. And his brother, Kevin Hayes, who posted a, a little Instagram post talking about how he lost his role model, his best friend, the person he lived up to. I mean, that's devastating. And then he's cousin, first cousins with the Kachuk with the Kachucks, so Brady and uh, Matt, they're, they're cousins, and Matt was talking about how he he regrets so much that he wasn't able to really put into words to Jimmy when he was around it how much he did for for him and his brother and the inspiration and how much they looked up to him and all that. And it's just reading a lot of stuff, especially from the Boston guys, like – the Hayes in Boston hockey go hand in hand. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's, <laughs> it's insane, and they lost a huge, huge part of that. All they all they kept saying, like when they were reporting, is just like hometown kid, and it's just like you already know what they mean by that when they're they're talking about Boston. Like they don't even say Boston at that second; they just say hometown kid, like Jimmy Hayes, and it's just like, yeah, it's fucking rough. Yeah, I, it's very, like you said, it's very eerie because right around the same age, I mean, I'm 30. I know he's, I'm not 31, but still seeing somebody that young around my age, it's just, puts a lot of stuff in perspective. Um, And just the, the timing for me personally, it's just very, very eerie and all that kind of stuff. Um, But yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's tough. That's all, it's, that's it's all I got, man. I can't think. I've been since this happened. I knew we were going to talk about it. And I've been trying to think about what what to say and all that, and it's just it's a loss for words, and it sucks. And I hope that I hope deeply that there wasn't anything. You know, the rumors going around. I hope it was anything bad, but I also hope that. See, it's hard because it's like it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. You're damned if it's if it's a horrible thing, you know, that happened. But then also it's like then you question then, okay, if it was natural cause or anything like that, it's like why? Like right. it's, it's it's there's I feel like there's no good answers for this no. at all. Absolutely not. But you know. Our thoughts go out to the Hayes, all, you know, all these, all these people's families, families and friends. I mean, it's, it's a rough time. And like we said, the hockey, hockey family, we might not be the biggest, you know, sport in the world and all that kind of stuff, but you know what? The hockey family is very tight knit. And just because you might not know the person personally, there's a chance, you know, somebody that has experienced them and that had experience with them. And it's just, it hurts everybody. It hurts everybody that these guys are lost. Yeah. But, so we're, I'm going to, we're going to pause for a second. Just, we don't, before we transition to anything else, um, we'll be, we'll be right back. All right. So hot stock, uh, hopefully, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, ha- let's happy, th- make things happy. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's go in. Let's get some good news going. Let's uh, let's not talk about uh, Vander Kane and the scumbag he is. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, if you want to look that up, go ahead and look that up. It's just more shitty news about Evander. So let's just say he didn't pay somebody that he told him that, that he was going to pay them. Do you know that without you know really going into this, that happened multiple times with the same person. Did it? Yeah. There was another thing in there, like he did. He like offered. Okay, so basically, well, since we're talking about it, right, basically, he 
got a girl pregnant and offered her two million dollars to have an abortion. Right. She had the abortion. He says, I ain't paying. She said, okay, I'll, I'll take $2 million to kill this baby. Which is I hope insane person, I me. hope this person doesn't get money either. I don't either. I, I really don't. Well, it's, it's shitty. I'm, both parties are fucking absolute well, trash. But the fact that somebody like Evander King can be like, you know, dude, fuck the responsibility. Here's $2 million. Go. You know, dude. <laughs> You know, but allegedly, yeah, allegedly, I don't know if it was the same girl, but there was another one that he paid like 150,000. A discount? Yeah, huge hometown discount. Jesus Christ, it's terrible still. So, but yeah, Evander Kane is trash. And the judge in his bankruptcy case gave the green light to this this uh, woman's lawyers to go and get the needed information. Yeah, right to di- rights to discovery or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So fuck you, Vander. Good, good good job not to talk about it. Everybody go look yeah. it up. Never mind. Fuck it. We'll just tell you. Fuck you, Vander Kane. Enjoy your time in the K and try pulling the shit in Russia. Ain't gonna work out that well. Actually, he probably <laughs> <laughs> he'd probably be do- doing really well in Russia. <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right, Hawks talk. Uh the first thing that happened after we stopped recording last week. A Hawks announced Mackenzie Enwistle signs a two-year extension for a uh, $800,000 average. Uh, this kicks in after this season, so it's the 22-23 season it kicks in. Yeah. Nothing fancy, but like, kind of like what we said, it's good to have these guys locked down because, you know, we're going to be a cap limit team. Yeah, so. and, I mean, this is going to be somebody that's going to probably fill out that third, fourth line in years to come. So, I mean, getting him locked in for at least the next three years at this point is good for probably his development and just for our security on the back end or like the lower lines, not the back end. It's kind of funny after the season Hagel had, like, no, I don't think anybody expected Hagel to have the season and he did. And all of a sudden now guys that are like that fringe type player stands locking down. Yeah. So he's like, fuck, we're not having another Hagel situation. Hurry up, sign, sign this, give me a little two-year extension. It's like when I was playing, like playing the video game NHL, and it, and you play franchise mode, you you get a solid line and and a guy that just makes that line like basically a plus five in franchise mode, and you lock him down for eight years at oh dude yeah a million dollars each year, and then he grows to be like an eighty nine overall just because the line does sick. It's like yeah, Stan's just been playing a lot of NHL right now. <laughs> I throw eight year out, eight year deals out to every prospect. Every, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, I see that you, you're only a 76 right now, but how about an eight-year deal? <laughs> eight-year deal? Oh, you want a million dollars? I'll give you a million five just to be happy. Yeah, there you go. Fucking, uh, I was in, <laughs> other than uh, Entwistle, uh, Zadora finally signed a deal. Oh, yeah. Go, going for his 5.8, he ended up settling for 3.75. But still, he's, uh, still a million dollars too much. Yeah, I mean, he was making 3.25 last year, and then he's – finally going to be a ufa at the end of like this deal so i think then he how is he not a ufa already because he's been in the league for like I fucking eight years he's been yeah. playing since he was like 18 or 19 i know that's insane yeah. they, I've, i kind of feel like because i know it's what 26 you're an rfa till you're 26 yeah they got to change that they got to do like games played or something eh, i mean they could add the stipulation of being like games if you reach like a certain amount of games play like if you play like 350 games or something before you turn 26 and you make it to like 23 24 like yeah i can see like you have enough nhl experience to fucking like claim that but it's really rough because like teams are trying to like, like you don't want to draft somebody that's really good and then like lose them in three years yeah because like what's the point like you're trying to build a team you need a lot of, you need more time yeah, and also it sucks from a, like the building a team perspective, but also the player perspective. It really sucks, especially if you're playing from 18, like you start, you get in an 18, and you say you're not like that elite level player, but you're still playing from your 18, like your 18 year. That's yeah. eight years of your life that you have no say in where you play. Yeah, it's kind of it's. I mean. That's tough. It's, I think it's worse in baseball, actually. Oh, one hundred percent. Oh, it's terrible. Baseball's terrible. If you ever want to the, make yourself feel better, just fucking go. Oh, it's probably worse in baseball, though. Especially the when you, they could do shit like they did with uh, Chris Bryan, where they can manipulate his uh, his playing time, so we, they got an extra year of him. 
Yeah. That's fucking ridiculous. That's hilarious. But yeah, so nice, nice little signing. I mean, it's, it's, I like this one a lot better than I like the Nylander one last week. I mean, the Nylander one is basically league minimum. So I don't think there's anything to not like about it. Yeah, I just, I like, I think I like, Enwistle is going to, he knows his role. So he's going to, I think we're going to get out of, more out of him than we will Nylander. I, I think, th- I think when he has played, you've seen like him be hungry, yeah. which is good. Exactly. So, yeah. Other Hawks news in yeah. a very hilarious social media post. The Blackhawks revealed new jersey numbers for their uh, new players. However, <laughs> spell check was not a part of uh, part of Blackhawk, the Blackhawk store that day. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury's jersey was hanging up and uh, his name was spelled wrong. It got past the jersey maker. It got past social media person. Who knows? Who knows how many guys did the person who make the jersey hang the jersey up? I don't know. And it's silly to me because it was also um, in the Blackhawks main like flagship store in Chicago, too. Like it's oh, my God. Embarrassing. It's, you, it's just a quick. It's a quick look up. That's all I got to say. Is I don't understand. How do you not look up your player's name, especially a guy that like, is going to be billed as like the guy? Yeah. That's yeah. Insane. That's I don't know. And then, like, everybody's like, oh, the Hawks are doing them just as dirty as, like, Pittsburgh and Vegas. It's like, I mean, not really. The Hawks didn't do that. It was the fucking store. I think spelling his name wrong on a jersey is not doing him dirty. I think trading him away for nothing is doing him dirty. I think giving him away for nothing twice. Exactly. Twice. Yes. Giving him away with a first-round pick was the dirtiest <laughs> by Pittsburgh. And then giving him away for a guy that you – uh, terminate his contract for is like the just uh, just barely a second worst. Oh my god, that's I wish the Hawks would resign that guy just as a like a like a fuck you to Vegas. Just... Like, like recouped our losses. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so some uh, some of the numbers. Um, Tyler Johnson's gonna be rocking number ninety. He was number nine his entire. Which career. I completely forgot we had Tyler Johnson. I thought it was Reese Johnson was changing his number to ninety. When I first saw the photo, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, Ty Joe." <laughs> yeah, uh, he was number nine through Tampa, but obviously retired. Uh, McCabe will be wearing number six. What was he normally wearing? Eighteen. McCabe was twenty nine and nineteen. Because he, because when he hit. Uh, when he absolutely destroyed line A, they were both 29 because I've watched that video so many times. They're like, the 29s meet at center. And then then I also saw another McCabe video where he gave up the 29 because Jason Pominville was coming back to Buffalo. Oh, and so yeah. then he wore 19, which was his uh, college hockey number at Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. 29. Yeah. 29. You're, from you're welcome. <laughs> 2013 to 2017. 19. From then on, obviously. Taser ain't giving up his number for him. So, and then the last one, I've always pronounced this guy's name wrong. Like I do, majority of the players in the league. Um, Tanner, Juhar Kyra, Kyra, Fuck. or this Kara, one. Kara. See, ha, ah, you weren't sure too. Yeah, but it didn't sound stupid when I said it. Yeah, shut up. Um, uh, 16, he'll be rocking 16 this season. And next season, and was it two year deal? There you go, Dice, your new favorite player. <laughs> oh yeah, last but last but not least in Hawks news, a little video went viral of Mark Andre Fleury playing in. I don't know if it was like a practice scrimmage or like a beer league type of thing, but he's on the ice. He's on the ice. A five on zero, <laughs> and just making these guys look stupid. Absolutely hilarious. Oh, my God. I am so excited. The best way to describe watching that video is Jonah Hill and freaking Sarah Marshall. I just went from six to midnight. Oh, <laughs> I was like, where are you going with this one? Oh, man, he's going to be so good. And he's still rocking the Vegas pads. I cannot wait to see the Blackhawk pads. It's got to be red. I hope so. I, I was saying, like, it would be neat to have him be yellow. Just because there's a little yellow in the logo. I think 
what was, was it you or Noli that was saying to like just do the color like a mixture of the colors of the feathers yeah Noli was saying to like do strip just do the colors like the the feathers in general that'd be pretty sweet yeah because i think i think all red would look uh, i don't know because turco were all red with red all red with white would be sick for sure yeah i don't yeah uh, i don't know i just hope he doesn't do black i hope he's yeah i want something cool yeah but yeah uh, i think that pretty much does it for hawkstock uh you got anything else no <laughs> no i don't all right uh dog days of summer are still here so hopefully we will get some more hawks news soon I think the Hawks are pretty much set until like training camp opens up. Everybody that needs to be signed is signed. Yep. The only thing I can maybe see is if we're going to see maybe some, you know, minor league moves such as um, a move in a goalie. I think. Oh, I never even thought about that. Yeah. Cause I mean, you think about it now, you got Lincoln and Flurry, Subban, Delia. You're gonna, are you gonna send Subban and Delia to to Rockford, and then anybody in Rockford we have is kind of getting screwed. Yeah, I mean that's fine. <laughs> who, who do we have? I don't even think we have anybody signed. Unless you just carry three goalies on the on the regular squad, and then you just have Delia or Subban in in the A. I kind of hope they trade Delia. Just give him a shot somewhere else. Give him a shot somewhere else. I don't think he it's not gonna be in Chicago. And I think at this point it's like we're just we're just keeping him from potentially having a career. <laughs> I don't I, I know that sounds weird because at least he'll play. I mean, he's play he'll play Rockford and all that, but I think he deserves an opportunity to go see if he can catch on with the team and like he can at least be a backup somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where, but so what teams need goalies still? Vegas. <laughs> they need a backup. Uh, Colorado, maybe? I don't know. I just found out, or I just realized today that James Reimer went to like San Jose. I had no idea. Yeah, I, I for- completely forgot. Oh my God. Who needs a goalie? I don't know. But uh, all right. So, talking about goalies, hey, what up? <laughs> Elvis Merzlikens, good news, had a kid. Yeah. Just like, just like he said he would, he named uh, the middle name of his child uh, Matisse after the goalie that s- saved everybody on July 4th. And it was pretty funny if, you've, if anybody had seen his, like, story. I think it was a story on Instagram. It might have just been a regular post, but he was he was out for a, a just roller skating, like to get cardio in. <laughs> and then he, he he pulls up his phone and takes this video because while he's like out doing his cardio, his wife calls and lets him know that her water just broke. And he's like, That's great. I'm gonna be a dad. And he goes, I'm 45 minutes away from my house. Oh, God. <laughs> he's like, Oh my god, I gotta skate home. 45 minutes away. It's like, oh shit. Elvis, Uber. Uber it. Yeah, yeah, he's got his phone. Why not just Uber? Like that's true. That's true. But he wanted to get that cardio in, you know. Oh yeah, there's probably nothing beats uh I gotta hurry up and get to my my wife who's having my baby cardio. Jesus. Yeah. Just full on, just full sand. The picture they posted too is really cool of like on the jersey with like the little goalie pads. Too. That was that was actually a really cool picture. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, I yeah, I think I did see it. Yeah, it was really cool. So awesome, awesome way to honor uh, Matias. Was it Matias? He's Kivlinks, Kivlinix. Yeah. So that name gives me trouble too. <laughs> Just I I can't handle Canadian American names. Kivlinks. Like, you throw like. European names at me. I'm just, I feel so dumb. Yeah, it's okay. It happens to everybody. But other goalie, it's about a lot of goalie talk here. Um, the biggest goalie news that came out was Hendrik Lundqvist announces retirement yeah. from the NHL. Uh, he 
probably the smart thing to do given given what he just went through the last year. Um, allegedly, this is not a new th- a new thing. Holy shit! That's raining. <laughs> a little storm action. Wow! I saw that lightning hit too. Gee, <laughs> unreal. Um, yeah. So apparently, that the him and the Rangers have known about this since I believe two thousand and five, if I'm remembering the post correctly. And they've been monitoring it, and there was never any issue that was concerning until this past year. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's insane. It's very sad that it had to go that way. I hate when these players can't retire on their own terms and yeah. go out the way they would want to go. Especially without a cup. Yeah. Um, he's a legend. He is probably one of the greatest goalies to play the game. He, uh, Rangers have already announced that they're retiring his number this year. Oh, really? Yeah. So they just haven't seven, even. Seventh round pick, by the way. Seventh round pick. He, let's see. I'm going to pull up his stats really all quick. All rookie here. team, two time all star, Vesno trophy winner. I like that it's it's funny if you're on the hockey reference, it show, you, they always show like his jersey numbers of players, and it says that. Capitals 35 Capitals. for yeah. this past season, but like zero stats. So in 15 year career, he had played in 887 games, 459 wins, uh, 64 shutouts goes down with a nine one eight save percentage and a 2.43 goals against average. Yeah. 27 career assists. That's not too shabby. And 18 penalty minutes. Mm-hmm. And then just the Stanley Cup finals appearance. Yeah. Which he had no chance of winning. Oh, God. <laughs> no chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, was, that was rough. That was uh, so sad when Martinez scored that, that goal to have to win the cup. Just because yeah. this was just sitting there when the – he was the only reason I think I was pulling for New York. I knew they weren't going to win, but I was like, God, if they can do it, yeah, give it to Hank. It's, it's. I mean, if he could have scored goals, they might have been able to win, but he was playing unreal. And a little known fact, or less known fact, I think, he has a twin brother. Yeah. So there's I forget, two what, his, I forget what his brother's name is. Uh, Joel. Joel. So there are, two, there are two people that look like that in the world. Yeah. That's not fair. You can say that. <laughs> Guy had style on and off the ice. Some of the coolest pads. Uh, he's always looks good going into the rink. And a big, uh, gu- big guitar player, too. But you know what? Good for him. Great career. Sucks you didn't get your cup. I mean, it's really unfortunate but hockey gods can be cruel that way yeah which lead us into this week's draft yes Best players to never win a stanley cup and we are not including players who are still playing they've had to retired um they have no chance to possibly win the cup there's no way as a player, they can win it as a, as a as a coach or something like that, but they cannot win it as a player anymore. Yeah. So, would you like the honor to go first? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, and we're doing we're still we're still going to attempt to do three forward, two D, one goalie. I got a I I got like I've been searching this entire time we've been talking for a fourth defenseman just in case, but I've got three. So, I have two defensemen, so you take one, I'm fucked. Yeah, eat shit. Here comes my first def- defenseman. It's uh, Brad Park. <laughs> you son of a bitch. That was the second one I found. God damn, I got nobody now. Oh, 17 got seasons in this show, nine-time All-Star, six-time Norris Trophy runner-up. Never won a cup. All right, well, then I'm going to take my one defenseman I have left just to make sure you don't take it. Uh, yeah, go for it. Bill Housley. Yeah, that's a good one. That's one yeah. of my three. <laughs> um, Twenty-one year career, uh, almost fifteen hundred games, 
He had 1,232 points and played three, uh, two seasons with the Blackhawks, which a lot of people forget. That's true. Um, it's fucking, I hate that this list that I'm looking at, like it has two other defensemen on it, but it's fucking Eric Carlson and PK Subban. I know that's all I could find. Like you motherfuckers. <laughs> if I can't, there be like, there's literally like no other lists that like have defensemen that haven't won it. But guess what? My other defenseman, Harry Howell. I don't know if you've ever seen this. I, I didn't know this until like I was looking this up, but played 21 seasons, won the Norris Trophy in 1967. And he has the New York Rangers career record for games played with 1,160. Oh, God damn it. I got to like figure this out. Yeah, suck my dick. All right. Um, I'm going to go. Oh, also not no Lundqvist on our list. We can't draft Lundqvist. That's fine. All right. I am going for my goalie then. Go for it. Get out of the way. Ryan Miller. Yeah. That's what I had to Guy is a beast and secretly just retired yeah Se- secret as hell <laughs> um it's gonna be let's see i think one of my favorite players like watching when i was younger i'm just gonna go with uh pablo burry oh that's a good one God, he was just insane if you ever had like any of the video games that like actually had stats that matter with pablo burry he was just a fucking lightning quick sniper so fast yeah he's he's so good all right um i'm gonna go a little hometown flavor jeremy ronick i knew you were gonna take jr i mean speaks for itself guy one of my favorite favorite black hots to play um Came very close with the Flyers, right? Is that the conference finals one year in uh, 2000? Fuck, I remember. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember off the top of my head. He was all over the place. I, I don't remember what years he was on which teams. Yeah, Chicago, Philly, Arizona. San Jose. San Jose, L.A. Yeah. It's insane that how much he moved around. What a character. Yeah. Just loves talking about co-worker cities. <laughs> and wanted- you, you, you completely missed on that. Um, I wouldn't say no to Patrick Sharp. This one is like the number one on this list. And I think I yeah, completely agree. This guy is just insane. Uh, Marcel Dion. 18 seasons, played with the Wings, the Kings, and the Rangers. Two-time Lady Bing wearing Art Ross Trophy, eight-time NHL All-Star. Just really, he's pretty fucking good. 700 goals. <laughs> That's just crazy. Is it Marcel Dion, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I just want to make sure I'm right on the right name here. So I – ooh, man. There's so many good forwards that didn't win. Yeah, there is. Um, wait, he was a forward. Okay, I'm going to go. Fuck. Matt Sundin. Okay. Got to go with number 13. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. That's a, that's a, good, that's a good pick. It's a good pick. Now I'm going to do. Who do I want to do? I want to do. I think I'm going to do Paul Korea. Yeah, that's who I was. I was. I was going between the two, Sydney and Korea. Paul Korea was just insane. Plus, well, like one of the greatest like highlights slash goal calls ever, off the floor and on the board. It, it's it's great. It's a shame that his career ended the way it did too. Like he's another guy like just concussion issues and all that kind of stuff. Like I yeah. wish. I wish we could have seen a, a like a, a full career of Paul Korea, especially because he still would have been in the league when it transitioned to where his style of play would have been like unreal. Yeah, yeah. If you were if you were to play currently, 
he would be top of the NHL for sure. He was so fucking good. Huh. Oh, you have what two picks left? I got two picks left. I'm gonna go with the other defenseman I found. Oh. Um, not gonna be able to pronounce it. Surprise, cool. surprise. On uh, Ron uh Gresh Grishner. Grishner. What are the stats? Do you have him? He was a puck movie defenseman, occasional forward who spent his entire career with the New York Rangers. He broke in the league in 1974 and stayed till 1990 in 98 two, uh, in 982 career games. He told 610 points and served as captain of the Rangers for the 90s or the 86 87 season. He reached the finals once back in 79, and the Canadians beat the Rangers in five games to win their fourth straight cup. Hmm. He was a defenseman, and that's what I'm taking right now. Yeah, right. I'm trying to All think right. of like what are some like recent defensemen that were like solid, but like you won't see him on these lists that like uh, everyone retired within the last like six years and didn't win a cup. So I heard I heard all, the guy, all the guys that were good like six years ago are still in the league right now, like with big ass contracts for no reason. Yeah, everybody that like, comes up to everybody that comes up to mind will be like guys that have one like one cup. Yeah, I think like Brent Burns and Eric Carlson when they retire, like I don't, I don't think they're gonna win one in San Jose. So unless PK. they get moved, yeah, PK, yeah, PK. not gonna win. Yeah, but PK wasn't good his whole career. Like, yeah. I don't know. I still think he was good enough for enough time to be like, well, that's a shame he didn't get it. Well, cup. he won the, he also won the Norris Trophy in a shortened season, right? That's why yeah. that was what 2013. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to go get my goalie, Roberto Luongo. Oh, Lou. Yeah. And, like, even though I didn't I didn't like him when he was uh, in Vancouver, he's probably one of the funniest players to follow. The second he left Vancouver, he became, like, one of my favorite players. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I mean, his tweet to Lundqvist. Yeah, like if the two goalies or what was it? Two goalies, no cup. No, uh, two goats, no cups. Oh, two goats, no cups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fucking. What a goof. Hockey I just loved. I loved when at first when it was when he first had his Twitter and nobody really was sure if it was him or not. <laughs> yeah, <that laughs> Do you remember was, that yeah. shit? That yeah. was so great. Like, Is this you? He's like, oh, I don't know. And it was like, what the day he retires when he finally like admitted it was him? Yeah. <laughs> So good. Daddy, what, what a character. I love Lou. All right, my last pick, forward Peter Bondra. <laughs> Dude, sick. Sick. <laughs> Did you know he has over 500 goals? Yeah. Do you know, like, that should be, like, everybody's first answers when they're playing <laughs> a game where you have to guess players who scored 500 goals? That's, yeah, that's a trivia question, just so you know, for uh, everyone. Yeah. Noli, I've uh, I wish Noli listened to these because I think he would have got a kick out of that. <laughs> All yeah. right, honor, honorable mention. Uh Jerome McGinla. Yeah. Curtis Joseph. Eric Lindros. Eric Lindros, Keith Kachuk. Yep. Dino Cicerelli. Yep. Tony Monte. Um, yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you guys say. I I will, that in there. I will fight that Amante was a lot You'll better. Than fight people. Amante? Jeez. No, I will fight Christ. that Amante was better than people give him credit for. Yeah, I mean he was solid. Dude was elite. I think like one of the thing, one of my only like memories of Tony Amante playing is at one point the Hawks had whoever they were playing had an empty net, and he just fucking puck was in the air, and he caught it and whipped it down the fucking ice trying to score <laughs> with his hand and i was like can you fucking can you yeah. do that <laughs> like eight years old like can can we do that like, yeah. can we, are we allowed to do that oh i know what i'm doing at practice tomorrow <laughs> yeah. it's like oh no you can't <laughs> yeah that makes sense okay God, cool. i would do anything to get him on the show anything 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 <laughs> but all right, so yeah, that's our list. Let us know who has the better team. Pat LaFontaine. What? Pat LaFontaine. Pat, oh, yeah. Honorable mention. Fuck. Yeah. 
Oh, so many good players. But yeah, let us know what you want to hear for uh, the next draft. Uh, again, doesn't have to be players. It could be, it could be different themes. It could be stuff. It doesn't have to be hockey. Honestly, we're in the we're in the summer. Let's let's have some fun with it. Um, anything else you want to say? I know this is kind of a, a little bit quicker episode. Uh, not lots to talk about, but I mean, not really. Like, there, yeah, there's not really anything to mention at this point. I'm trying to do a quick glance at hockey, right? Just to make sure nothing. Yeah, if there's any any hockey news just popping up real quick. Anything that broke maybe in the last 45 minutes. Doesn't seem uh, like it. It's going to be a lot of shit posts of just how how close is, is or how close are arenas to the nearest strip club? Like that oh, was on there recently. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, there, oh, here's that. I'll, I'll see your Costco post and, <laughs> and one up you with strip clubs. I love how that went viral though. Oh, God, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a good one. A good question, and maybe we can we can talk about it real quick. Just you know, because we haven't talked enough. Yeah. What do you think is the most realistic breakable record in in the NHL? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, most realistic breakable record. Yeah. That like that like seems unbreakable. Like, hold on. I'm trying to find the exact post. I saw this one earlier, and I wanted to like. This, I mean, yeah, I have it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking top comment of one of the most breakable NHL records: longest Stanley Cup drought. No one's taking this away from the Leafs. That's all they have. Well, yeah, it, they break the record every year. They don't fucking win it. So <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this this post um it was user certain underscore onion. Um he <laughs> said whether Gretzky any of Gretzky's records, Broder's win record, or Glenn Hall's 502 consecutive starts. That is fucking bananas. Yeah, that's not gonna get broken ever. Especially too, what's even crazy about that is when they didn't play that many games a season. Yeah. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, I mean, back back when I was a senior in high school, I played every single game for us, and that's no big deal. <laughs> uh, Basically, he the said same. he said uh, most career five on three shorthanded goals. Right, right now, it's Mike Richard, Richard, who currently has four. His career his leader with four. Mike Richards. Mike Richards. Um, mm, it does say Richard, but I don't know. It seems like it would be Mike Richards. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What are some of these? Like I, the one I just saw. Yeah, most most team losses in a row, <laughs> and it's eighteen. And it's and they're going. We know it's break cool because Buffalo just tied it. Yeah, like Buffalo could fucking break that record next year. Um. Let's see. I'm trying to see if any of these. One of the records I'd like to see broken that I think is possibly like pretty attainable for somebody like Vasilevsky would be like most career shutouts. Oh yeah. Like it's, it's a, it's a high number, but I think it's like over a hundred. Um, let me look it up real quick. Is it fair to say a record? 125 right now? And that's Martin Broder. We can't say an obvious record that's going to be broken considering Ovechkin's only like what? We talked about it last time. Oh, no. Power play goals. The record is 274. Ovechkin's at 269. Well, yeah, that's pretty obvious. Yeah. You think that he's going to make that one goal a year for the next five years of his deal on the power play? All of his goals. I think think he breaks it before the last year of his deal. (laughs) Uh, record type. All right. What if he just? What if he goes completely fucking goalless and only puts like five, like four in or five, and then he scores the power play goal to break that record at the same time he scores the goal to break Gretzky's record of most goals. Just do two at one. That'd be awesome. That'd be fucking stupid. <laughs> and not gonna happen. That'd be hilarious. Uh, most career hat tricks. Gretzky's got fifty. Uh, Ovechkin's the closest active player with twenty seven. That's not being broken. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. Flurry is the closest active player right now in shutouts with 67. So he's still 
I mean, with the Hawks this year being looking the way they're looking, he could get about 60 and, and, his, and his career with 127. Game-winning goals, Jagger holds the record 135. Ovechkin is the closest active player with 116. Um, Patrick Marlowe, that young young player, um, is 109. They still have him listed as an active player. Patrick Marlowe? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he isn't officially retired. Right. Yeah, so. I don't know. I think, like, hockey is so weird. Like, you're going to have to get to, like, a really weird – records to see something that's going to be realistic yeah it's just yeah it's just especially like these goaltending records that i'm looking at it's like they played every fucking game for years and like mark andre Fleury right now is like the most time played in the in the as as a goalie and he's still 200 wins like are 199 wins away from like being most wins of all time but he also has played almost almost 400 less games. Most career shootout goals. Taves holds it right now with 50. Franz Nielsen has got 49. Kaner's at like 47. Yeah, Kaner's at 47, and TJ Yoshi is 45. Oof. Parise is 44. Pavelski's 43. Kopitar's 42. Crosby's 40. It is surprising Datsuk only had 40 and his shooting percentage in the sh- shootout was only 40%. Yeah, that is pretty surprising. Taze is like almost like he's 49.5% in the shootout. He's so fucking good and nobody gives him enough goddamn credit. It is Taze? real. Yeah. I'm just like looking at goalie stats. I don't even. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's just easier. Let's see. Let's look at defensemen. Why I couldn't find I couldn't find this earlier. Um, active players and points. There's no there is no way in hell any any defenseman anytime soon is breaking 1579 points set by Ray Bork. No. Like the closest right now that's active is Brent Burns, and he has 723. Like, you got to play for 40 fucking years, like Ray Bork did, <laughs> just to get yeah. that kind of points. Oh, God. Different era of um, hockey is insane. Oh, Eric Carlson and Duncan Keith are tied at 625 points each. Yeah, what do you think about that? <laughs> I don't think about that. Yeah, let's see. It looks like a weird one. Like, Fucking, who's got the most shot blocks or something? I guess they don't even have that on this website. I don't know. All right. <laughs> all right. That's, all I, that's all I got. Yeah, I can't. I can't think of like any other like attainable records that are like not already about to be broken. Yeah, I don't think that shutout record is gonna be broken anytime soon, unless. Somebody just goes on an absolute tear for like six years. Yeah, it's not happening. Yeah, like it's it showed on that list that I was just looking at, like the top 25, and like the lowest one was like 38. And then Vasilevsky wasn't even on that list at this point. So fuck man, like if you're not even at 38, and even if you had like the next like six years of like 10 shutouts each, you're still at least 40 away. 30 to 40 away from like breaking the record. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would be insane. Can't wait till they have to blow up that team in Tampa. <laughs> Say every year as they continually find a way to keep it together. That's right. One of these years. All right. Um, I think that about does it. Yeah. All right. So that's episode 150. That's kind of a milestone episode number. Yeah. <laughs> 150. Let's go. 50 away from the big 200, which we'll probably get this year. With I think We'll do more than one episode once the season starts. Yeah. Hopefully. Knock on I got nothing but time on my hands right now. <laughs> <laughs> Keep rubbing it in, Tanner. That's right. All right. So what do you want to call this one? Oh, boy. I don't know. 
There's a lot of highs and a lot of lows this episode. I know. I was thinking sad summer, but <laughs> um Jesus. I oh, I like that. Let's go with that. Yeah, it's sad summer. Sad summer. Yeah. That works. All right, so for Jerem and Tanner, this is episode 150, uh, Sad Summer. Remember to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at WCB Podcast. Follow our network at HockeyPodNet. Follow our user code uh, on DraftKings, uh, promo code. Follow it or put it in. Put it in, you know. Put it in. You you heard the ad at the beginning of the episode. You know what to do. Mm. Uh, code THPN. Um, exclusive offers. Lots of, I don't know if you're into football gambling, college football gambling, NHL gambling coming back. Let's go. Uh, yeah. I got Not a gambler. <laughs> you got to become a gambler, man. The only thing I gamble on is stocks, baby. That's the biggest casino out there. Jordan Belfort over here. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So yeah, we will uh we'll check in on the next one. That's right. Love you boys. Bye. Uh-huh.